Microplastics found in testicular tissue Scientists detected significant concentrations of microplastics in testicular tissue from humans and dogs. Scientists say this discovery may be related to the decline in sperm counts in men around the world that has been observed for years. Scientists from the University of New Mexico examined 23 human testicles and 47 dog testicles. Human testicles where research were obtained during autopsy. Dog testicles during castration surgery. Scientists found microplastics in all samples, 12 different types. The presence of plastic particles in testicles increases concerns about their possible impact on human reproductive health. The description and results of the research were published in the journal Toxicological Sciences, doi, 10.1093-toxi-kf060. Microplastics are tiny pieces of plastic less than 5 mm in size produced by the breakdown of larger pieces of plastic garbage. They are common in the environment, they are present in oceans and soils, fall with rain, and even float in the air we breathe. Our food also contains significant amounts of these substances. Our study revealed the presence of microplastics in all testicular tissue samples from humans and dogs, said Xiaoxiong Yu. Who led the study. At first, I had doubts whether microplastics could enter the reproductive system. But when I got the results for the dogs, I was surprised. I was even more surprised when I got the results for people, he added. The team first dissolved the fats and proteins in the analyzed samples, then centrifuged each of them, leaving plastic particles at the bottom of the test tube. In the next step, the researchers heated the plastic granules in a metal cup to a temperature of 600 degrees Celsius. They used mass spectrometry to analyze the gases emitted during the combustion of various types of plastics. Microplastics have previously been detected in the bloodstream and other organs such as the lungs, heart, and liver. It turns out that they are also present in the testicles. The average concentration of microplastics in dog testicular tissue was 122.63 micrograms per gram of tissue. In humans, it was almost three times higher and amounted to 328.44 micrograms per gram. The most common type of microplastic in the samples, both in dogs and humans, were polyethylene P, particles. It is a plastic used to produce bags, plastic bottles, and other packaging. Scientists were unable to count sperm in human samples because of the way they were preserved, but they were able to do so in samples taken from dogs. Analyzes showed that a higher level of poly, vinyl chloride, particles in the testicular tissue, i.e. PVC, or PVC, a widely used material used for example, in water and sewage installations, was associated with a lower sperm count. No correlation was found with PE concentration in tissues. Because PVC is widely used in many household products, there is concern that the plastic may be contributing to a decline in sperm counts. This decline has already been linked in other studies to heavy metals, pesticides, and various chemicals. You, who led the research, admitted that the type of material is of great importance. PVC can release many chemicals that interfere with spermatogenesis and contain substances that cause endocrine disorders, he emphasized. The study compared human and dog tissue for several reasons, 
one of which was that dogs live alongside humans and share their environment. Compared to rats and other animals, dogs are closer to humans. Physically, their spermatogenesis is also closer to that of humans, you noted, adding that the sperm count in dogs also appears to be decreasing. We believe that dogs and humans share common environmental factors that contribute to this, he explained. Analyzes showed a correlation between the amount of PVC in dog testicular tissue and sperm counts, but further research is needed to prove that microplastics are causing the observed decline in sperm counts. We have many unknowns. We need to really look at the potential long-term effects. We don't want to scare people. We want to provide reliable data and make people aware that there are a lot of microplastics in their environment, you emphasized.